Your reasons for listening to this show, well, those are your own. But just keep in mind that the views, information, or opinions expressed on the Tuttle Daily Podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of our sponsors. Yeah, it's called free speech, people. Nobody's forcing you to listen. Get ready for your daily dose of Tuttle. Uh, the all-time greatest uh, intern slash producer we've ever had, of course, Tuttle. Tuttle in Florida. From the Hobo Fish Camp, it's the Tuttle Daily Podcast. No wonder nobody likes you, Tuttle. Everything's a goddamn debate. Welcome to another edition of the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hope you guys are having a great day so far. Make sure you check out my website, Tuttle.net. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E dot net. Uh, when you go to that website, you're going to be able to find every single place. You're going to be able to find me online. You're going to be able to find all my social media. You're going to be able to uh, find out how you can donate to the cause. You know, I'm going to have to, I, I'll, I'll be able to start, you know, stopping start stopping. That makes a lot of sense, Tuttle. I'll, I'll be able to stop having to give out my PayPal account, paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. Thanks to you guys supporting my live stream, the youtube.com slash Tuttle, the Tuttle Daily Podcast live stream. You guys have helped me grow and, and get to that goal. Because a lot of people don't know this about YouTube. For you to get monetized, you got to have at least 3,000 subscribers. And over 4,000 hours worth of viewing time in a calendar year. And these nightly live streams, you guys have been telling your friends, family, loved ones, whoever it may be. Because, I, I listen, I know that I sound like a broken record. But a lot of you guys have got to realize that your audience is always changing. Some people come. Some people go. Hopefully more people come than they go. I got to admit, the last couple of days, maybe a week. My content has been slacking. It really has. And I apologize to you guys. Because this, this podcast is one of the most important things for me. It keeps me busy. I talked about this. When, when, I, when I first stopped drinking, the first two weeks, a lot of it was physical. The physical withdrawals absolutely sucked. Now, you want to know what was worse than getting off the alcohol? Getting off all of the psychotropic meds, that, that was by far one of the worst withdrawals that I had ever had. Swear to God, I'm not exaggerating. I was in bed for almost two weeks, did not feel like doing anything at all. But I feel better now. But the other thing, back on the alcohol, after the first two weeks, when I got rid of the physical withdrawal, staying busy. Because, you know, when I would get done with the show, when I was living with Colton, we would just sit out in the garage and, you know, if I didn't have anything to do, I'd be like, hey, why don't I have a drink? And I would do that. That's why I ended up getting addicted to Minecraft. I know that it's stupid for a 40-year-old to be playing a kid's game, but it helped keep me busy. And I did not even think about having a drink. But this podcast, this podcast is not a hobby. This is something that I'm trying to build. Yes, I, I want to get back on terrestrial radio somewhere. I love doing it. There's just something about being out there on that tightrope, not knowing the, the next words out of your mouth could get you in trouble, could get you canceled in today's culture. Because just one wrong, wrong word can get you fired immediately over the dumbest stuff sometimes. That's why I'm trying to build this, and I cannot thank you guys enough, my supporters. But the reason that the content has been lacking, and if you haven't heard yet, my dad has been in the hospital for over a week now. He was having some internal bleeding, and I'm not, I'm, I don't want to get too graphic. You know, we all have a little bit of blood sometimes in our stool, but... He went to go use the bathroom one day, and it was just way too much. Like, you could tell that it was blood. So, we end up taking him to the hospital. And this is the other thing that I'm going to get to later. I do not understand why religious groups are able to own hospitals. 
It's almost like a racket. It really is, and I'll get into that real soon. But my mom ends up going in because they won't let a lot of people into the hospital. My dad only gets two visitors a day, which is really, really difficult because there's a lot of family members that want to see him, me and my mom included. But my Uncle Harold, my Uncle Harold, he, li he now lives in Florida, my dad's brother. So the days that he comes and visit, I don't get to see my dad. My mom does, and my uncle does. Now, come to find out, when we brought him into the triage, they had him waiting for almost five hours. And I don't know if you know this, that my dad is sick. My mom kept begging and pleading because they were in such a hurry, she didn't bring any food. She had his medication and his insulin, but the insulin's not going to raise his blood sugar. It's actually going to lower it. Kept asking, begging to be able to get food. Was not able to get it. When they finally saw him, his blood sugar was 25. Now, I don't know if you know much about diabetes, but your blood sugar, like that perfect range is like anywhere from 100 to 140. Anything under 100, it starts getting a little lower. But that, that sweet spot is 100 to 140. But his was 25. Now, I did email Dr. Dan, and I don't want to bother him because I know he's a very, very busy guy, but he was kind enough to get back to me, and I was telling him what was going on. My dad now, it's not Alzheimer's because Alzheimer's is a progressive disease. It's just not something that happens overnight. And Dr. Dan did get back to me, and he did say long-term exposure of having low blood sugar can cause acute dementia. And that is exactly what my dad has. I saw my grandfather go through Alzheimer's. He ended up dying from it. My, mo my mom's uh, sister, my Aunt Sue, she didn't have it, but she was in hospice for a while. And I got to tell you, that, that really fucked me up big time. You know, a lot of people, I know everybody enjoys life. They really, really do. But if we are all going to go, which we're all going to go one day, I want it to be quick. I don't want my family members which after my mom and dad are gone, I'm really not going to have any. But I, I, I just don't want people to see me in that state, to see me deteriorate slowly. And I don't want you guys to think that I am, like, being insensitive, because I'm not. But I'm a little concerned. You know, I, I've talked to this to a, a, a couple of people. I have not cried once during this. I've gotten a little emotional. And I'm worried that people think that I'm going to be heartless or maybe I'm broken in some way because I'm not showing any emotion. Now, on the inside, I'm, I'm, I'm dying. It, 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 it kills me. But I can't cry. And I don't know if it's because my body is just, my body and my mind knows that I got to be strong in front of my mom because my mom is having a really, really hard time with this. My mom and dad have been married. They just celebrated their 47th wedding anniversary. And, and I look at that. I, I respect that. I think, I think that is a very, very big accomplishment. But it also makes me feel like a failure. Makes me feel like a failure because I ended up having a divorce. And I know that I shouldn't really, really feel that bad about it because a lot of people here in the United States, the divorce rate is through the roof. But I always wanted to be able to start a family. I wanted to be able to make my parents grandparents. I don't think that's going to happen now. I, I'm holding out hope. I'm getting frustrated. You know, every time I ask for answers, it's, we're running more tests. We're running more tests. They cannot figure it out. 
and I'm not going to throw around accusations and stuff, but it almost seems like they're kind of covering their ass. And this is where I need your help. If you know anybody that might be able to help me out, or maybe you have gone through this situation to see your, your, your parents or your loved ones suffering and not get any answers at a hospital, I would like to hear from you. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. That's Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. And I, I've talked about this before. This, this is not the type of radio that I want to do. It's just, I, I think it is my job as a broadcaster. You know, some broadcasters, they get political. I talk about politics a little bit sometimes on this show, but for the most part, I cannot stand either side. I think they're all crooks. They don't give a damn about us at all. I also don't like to talk about sad, depressing stuff. I like to be able to have fun. I like to be able to share some of my personal experiences, which I'm starting to get some now. You know how hard it was to be able to do a podcast, to start a podcast during a pandemic when the only thing in the news was the pandemic? Everything that was in the news was about George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, how divided our country is. Being stuck in a place, not going out, not doing stuff, taking care of your parents, and not getting those personal experiences, which I think is the most important part, of forming a bond with your audience. People love reality TV. People like it. it, it I, I compare reality TV to like an aquarium. People just like to look at the fish swimming around, doing what they're doing might not be some of the most important or impressive things out there, but you know what? People still get fish tanks because they like reality. Because those fish, they all have a mind of their own. They do what they want to do, and people like just watching it. See what happens next. And I'm starting to get some of those personal experiences, and, and I'm going to talk about them. Before I get off, well, there are a couple more things I want to talk about with this, okay? So my dad... Right now, they don't know if this is going to be permanent. I pray to God that it's not. One of the big concerns that I have here is uh, I am a big, firm supporter of the Second Amendment. Do I believe that guns need to be, like, regulated? Yes, of course, there needs to be some restrictions. I know some people are just pacifists which I am, I try to avoid all conflict, physically and violently. But I know some people that, that like, look at people that own guns as bad people. You know, you can create all the laws that you want to in the world, but guess what? The criminals are still going to have them. But my dad, he has a very big gun collection. Now, if my dad does come home, one of the main concerns... That I have is, one, him maybe hurting himself, because my dad is a very prideful person. He's not going to want to sit around and, and, and put us through anguish. So I'm afraid of what he may do to himself. I'm afraid uh, maybe he might not know what's going on. Maybe shoot my mom, shoot me. I, my dad in his right mind would never do that in a million years, but I. I feel like I almost have to get all the firearms out of the house. Does that, does that make me a bad person? Seriously. I, I'm not trying to infringe on my dad's Second Amendment rights. I know how to handle guns. I've gone to hunter safety classes. I've grown up around them. I've shot guns a lot of times. I know my, my way around them very, very well. But I, 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 I also have to protect myself. I got to protect my mom. And I got to protect my dad. Now, if it got really, really bad, I, I would not hold it against my, my pops if he wanted to handle it. 
Because, like I said, he's a very strong man. Some people like to be able to control how they're going to go out. If this is a terminal thing, that's why I was always a big supporter of Jack Kevorkian. I think it is a person's right that if they are sick, they are terminal and in 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 so much pain, if they want to be able to go out on their own terms, I have absolutely no problem with that. But I almost feel like I do have to take all the firearms out of the trailer. And I, 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 once again, I would love your email me, Tuttle at gmail.com, or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. The last thing I want to talk about, and I'm going to get on to uh, some more fun personal experiences, but I, I think you guys needed to hear this. I don't, I don't know if a lot of people realize, here in the state of Florida, a lot of these hospitals are owned by religious groups. I think there are 301 5C groups, which means the medical field, they're already a bunch of crooks, as is. They rape us when it comes to prices. Do you realize that these hospitals that are owned by religious groups pay absolutely no taxes? Am I the only one that has a problem with that? I don't want a religious group being in, con- in control of my loved one's health care. Because I'm missing, if we can't figure it out, we're, we're going to pray for him. We're going to pray for him. But no, the, these people, they are making millions and millions and millions of dollars. And you would think, with them not paying taxes, they should have all the money in the world to run all the tests that they want. Because they're not paying any fucking taxes, just like these churches are. People wonder why we're in such a deficit right now. Start taxing these hospitals that are owned by religious groups. Problem solved. Start taxing the churches. Those same churches that don't pay taxes, the same ones that got bailed out during the the stimulus package. Yes, yes. Get rid of them. They are double dipping. They are the asshole that has that tortilla chip, takes a bite, and then puts it right back in the guacamole. And that's what these, uh, and you know what I'm going to say? It's Advent Health. Advent Health. I'm sorry about going on a rant. Going to take a quick break. Be back in a few minutes. You are listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Great news, folks. You now have the chance to see the face in front of that sexy voice. (sighs) Right you are, sir. The Tuttle Daily Podcast streams Monday to Friday on YouTube. Anything can happen at the Hobo Fish Camp. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, sir. That's enough. Okay. So go to YouTube.com slash Tuttle. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you're notified anytime Tuttle goes live. Good job, sir. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. You're gonna. It, the show is going to sound a little different today. Uh, I'm having to do a little restructuring here, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm mad at my sponsors. The sponsors that I've been on, I have been lucky enough to be able to start a brand new podcast and have some pretty good sponsors. But right now, there's there's a lot of factors that are going on. A lot of people are getting back to work. A lot of people maybe are not getting back to work. Maybe some people are struggling right now. They're not buying things like they used to. Or, you know what? It could be that my show just sucks. I mean, I, I look, that's not out of the realm of possibility. There, there have been a couple of my sponsors that have kind of fallen behind. And I'm not going to be mad at them. I'm not going to be mad. Listen, I am grateful for your generosity. I'm grateful that you had enough faith and taken a chance on me. I really, really do. And I hope to have you back one day. But, you know, this podcast, it's still growing. Trust me, the the numbers are are 100% times better than what they were when I first started. I told you how humbling it was when I first started the podcast that, you know, 
I, I worked on a lot of nationally syndicated radio shows and was heard on a daily basis by hundreds of thousands of people. And to be able to look at that first week, and I was getting 25 downloads, 18 downloads, and then started growing. You guys started liking it. You guys started telling your friends, just everybody that you could. And, and it's kind of weird. It's funny that I started the podcast right at the beginning of the pandemic last year. And, and it grew by word of mouth. You guys did not socially distance on the Tuttle Daily podcast. You guys were like making out with everybody, just telling them about the show. So if you guys are interested, and it's not like it costs a lot of money. I, I don't want you to think that I'm charging rates like at a terrestrial radio station. Hell no. I'm down to haggle. Hell, if it just wants to be a one offer, you got a business, and you're like, man, I got an event coming up. I got a, I got a Memorial Day special. I know it's not close to Memorial Day, but I was just giving you an example there. And you want to be able to promote something, we can talk. I will plug the hell out of you guys. Like, like I said, I, I don't have to play by the radio rules anymore. There is no such thing as payola, plugola. There really isn't. So if you would like me to promote one of your events, your business, hell, I don't care if you just want me to plug your social media. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com, Tuttle with two Ds, T-U-D-D-L-E at gmail.com. Tell me what you want to plug and make me an offer. Make me an offer because I want to be able to earn the money. I don't want you guys to think that I'm panhandling uh, during this podcast. No. Make me earn it. If you would like me to plug anything, hell, if you want me to like tell a family member, happy birthday, happy anniversary, plug your social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be. Hell, if any of you women out there, I didn't even think about this. I just thought about this off the top of my head. You know, a lot of people, a lot of women have OnlyFans page now. If you're a chick out there, that that listens to the Tuttle Daily Podcast and you got an OnlyFans page and you want me to promote it, I will promote the fuck out of it. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com. And then what, uh, what, oh, and you can also leave me a voicemail. How about this? You know what? If you want to do your own read, see, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this all over now. Uh, if you want to if you want to leave me a voicemail 407-270-3044 once again that is 407-270-3044 talk about it you can plug your own event you can do your own live read and then at the end of the voicemail tell me what you're wanting to pay I will reach out to you and I will play your stuff the one that's really, really confusing the most about me is uh, Eric from Stitch You Up. I don't, I don't know if I did anything wrong to make him mad. I don't think so. I, I really, really don't, but I, I, I can't get a hold of him. If, if any of you guys have talked to Eric from Stitch You Up, please tell him to get a hold of me. Because I've been reaching out a lot. And I hope he's okay. Because, I mean, he really helped me out. The deal that I had going on with him was he, he would help me out with my merch. And I would run his commercial spot. So I know that this is a lot of business stuff. But, you know, like I said, I have to go in a new, like, I got to call an audible and I got to go in a different direction. Because, uh, look. I know that a lot of people probably fast forward through the commercials. That's the thing about podcasts. People want podcasts because they don't want to listen to commercials. So right now, you guys are going to get more content. I got the promos and stuff that I can break it up with. You know, like that brand new YouTube uh, commercial promo that Josh Kale up in Canada did for me. Can't thank him enough. He's another guy. Super, super talented, had faith in me, wanted to work with me, and I cannot thank him enough. 
Coming up on Friday, I don't know if you guys remember Hannah, Hannah from Canada. I'm going to have her on the show because she finally had her kid, but there is <laughs> some problems going on. There is. There are, you know, you, everybody wants to talk about, and I'm not calling Hannah or her family white trash at all, but the Canadians, the Canadians, they have the same problems that Florida man has. And we're going to get into that. You're, you're not going to want to miss the interview that I'm going to be doing with Hannah from Canada. Because baby daddy, I mean, I mean, I kind of talked about this before they had the kid. I was like, are you sure you want to do this? Because it, 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 is, it is a responsibility. You know, I haven't gone into to details and stuff, and I'm not saying Hannah is going to be a great mom. She, she's doing all of that stuff that she needs to do. But it, it's, it's important. A lot of people just pass it off. But you can really fuck up a kid. You can, you can cause problems that affect them in the future. You, it, it, it's proven. It is. That's why I keep telling people. I'm not going back to the Second Amendment talk again. Not, it's, it's, it's not the guns. You're never going to be able to get rid of the guns. Because the criminals are going to have them. Because they don't want to obey the law. We got to concentrate on mental illness. And, and you know what? I'm not going to speculate. I want to talk to Hannah from Canada first. Because there is some pretty good drama going on there. And this is an interview you're not going to want to miss. <laughs> So at the beginning of today's show, I was talking about my dad being in the hospital and him being able to only have two visitors a day. Uh, it, it's it's kind of weird. It really is. Look, I, I'm not saying that COVID is all made up. I'm not taking it seriously. No, I, I, I really, really do. And I, I know that they got to have protocols and stuff, but I think that it's really, really messed up. But uh, on the days where I'm not able to go visit, I try to get away. Because I, if, if I don't get out, if I'm not staying busy, I know that I'm going to get in my own head. I, I talked to, I, I went out on a date last night with my friend Teresa. I met her at the beginning of 2020, uh, right after I got fired from Bubba's show. Uh, I got off of all the psychotropic meds. You know, I, I, I've talked about this before. I didn't realize how much those medications were messing up my libido. You know, I, I, I always thought it was because, oh, uh, after my divorce, I'm trying to concentrate on my career, try to make something for myself. But I, I, I really wasn't because I was drinking. And if, if, if I was serious about wanting to better my life, to advance my career, I wouldn't have been doing all the dumb drugs and alcohol and stuff on top of mood stabilizing drugs. That is a horrible, horrible combination. But it did. It killed my libido. I was not interested in women at all. I wasn't even masturbating. Because it, it does. It, it kills your interest in the opposite sex. But when I ended up getting off of those, I ended up, you know what, I'm going to get back on Tinder. Now, Tinder, you meet a lot of crazy chicks. But I met, I met Teresa. She is a uh, nurse in charge of a whole floor. I, I don't know if it's intensive care, but she works at a very big hospital. And we ended up connecting on, on Tinder. And it was so quick, like, like as soon as we connected, she was like, you know what, instead of just messaging, but she also knew me from working at Real Radio 104.1. So we exchanged numbers, and, like, within an hour, we were talking on the phone after she was getting done with, like, a 12-hour shift. And we've hung out a couple of times. It, right at the beginning, we were, we were going out a couple of times, 
a week. And then she got busy. She has a kid. And that, that's also the thing about it that I've had to become accustomed to. You know, some, some guys will not be interested. They'll run for the hills as soon as they meet a woman that has a child. That's not the case. You know, a lot of guys get jealous because a single mother is not paying enough attention to them because they're with the kid. No, 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 not, not with me. Yes, would I like more time? No, but the single mom and her kid is the most important thing. As a guy, it makes you look like the biggest asshole in the world. If you're competing for attention with somebody's child, like it, it, you, you got to pit the kid first. But the reason I, I, I'm talking about Teresa is because we went out and hung out last night. Nothing happened. She actually came to the Hobo Fish Camp, watched me do one of my live streams. We went out riding around on the golf cart. We went exploring. Oh, the coolest thing. You know, this, this kind of made me feel like a kid again. Because I, I cannot tell you the last time that I saw lightning bugs the way that I did. Is it because I'm just not paying, paying attention? Because as kids, we, we notice things. You know, I played that clip the other day. When, when you're a kid, the simple things are important to you. And I think the older you get, you don't appreciate those things. So we were over at the park. They got like a little lake there. It's dark as hell. I was showing her how to do some of the, the, the nighttime photography that I've been doing. And she was like, look, what, what, what is that? And you would not believe all the lightning bugs that, that we saw. I know that it, it, it sounds stupid to get excited over it, but it, it almost made me feel like a kid again. And the reason that I'm bringing this stuff up is, you know, like, once again, I know a lot of people are going to think that I'm insensitive. Maybe I'm a sociopath because I'm really not showing any emotions right now. But I got to be strong. And if I, if I don't get out, and try to do some, some stuff that's normal, that normal people do, I'm going to get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get right back into that rut. You know, I, my ADHD is really, really bad today. And I, did, I didn't even, like, wrap up the whole being on the mood-stabilizing drugs. Do you realize that now, since I'm not on those, that I'm actually having to deal with real life situations like normal people do. And I, I, don't, I don't want you to think I'm, I'm against the meds. Do I think doctors over prescribe these medications? Yes, they do. Because they got drug reps. Hey, you want to go on a cruise? Hey, got this nice car. Oh, hey, here's a bonus for you for writing so many of those prescriptions. They work for somebody. But when I was in the hospital and they, the, their answer was to just throw pills down my throat, that's why I got off of them. And now for the first time, I'm having to deal with real life situations. You know, when I was on those drugs, I didn't get to, I, I didn't get to experience true happiness. I wasn't sad. Yeah, I was depressed, but I, I was just a zombie. So I got to get out and do those things. Those days that... I cannot go see my dad because my mom, my mom wants to see him every single day. Because like you said, they've, they've been married for 47 years. She, she gets that pass no matter what. Now, when my Uncle Harold comes down, yes, he needs to see him. I think he needs to see his brother. Because my, dad, my dad's middle brother ended up passing away last year. So I, I think it's important for my dad to be with his uncle, but getting out on those days, I stayed busy. I did so much yard work around the house the other day because I, I want things to look nice. I want things to look great when my dad does come home. I don't want you guys to think that I've given up hope because I've not. That's why I did it. I wanted this place to be immaculate for when he comes home. 
I'll give you another example. The other day that I couldn't go to the hospital. I met somebody on Facebook, one, maybe one of the most interesting people that I've met in a really, really long time. Her name is Amanda Bellinger. She's a third-generation barber, and she opened up her new shop. She opened up her new shop, and I know a lot of you guys are probably like, Oh, well, what, how can a woman be a barber? I mean, I, I could see those stereotypes. But I got to tell you, it was one of the best haircut experiences that I've ever had in my life. Very, very retro, very hip, very cool. And she's great. Like, if you want to check her out, the name of her shop, it's the Lost Arts Barber Shop. It's in Melbourne. It's located at 905 East New Haven Avenue, Suite 204, Melbourne, Florida, 32901. Now, if you want to give her a call, you can easily do that. Set up an appointment because she is so good. She only does appointments. I, don't, I, I need to ask her if she does walk-in. But you can give her a call, 321-804-1067. And if you want to follow her on social media, just search The Lost Arts Barbershop on Facebook or The Lost Arts Barbershop on Instagram. But her name is Amanda Bellinger, third, gener third generation barber. Her grandfather was a barber. Her dad was a barber. She was working another job. And she quit it. She quit it because she already had grown up. Like, you, you know, for example, people learn the family business. I learned how to weld. Yes, this nerd, this nerd person that you know as Tuttle is an, is an amazing iron worker. I can get up there, walk the beams, weld, do all that stuff. But she quit her job. She quit her job, went and got, to, got her barber's license, became a barber. She's got this cool thing that goes on. Her shop is amazing. Some really cool local artists have paintings up there. She has a, uh, a record player. And if you bring in a piece of vinyl, she will play it for you. And if you want to donate it to her collection, she actually gives you a discount on your cut. Man, go, go to my Instagram page. I've always thought that I have had some of the worst haircuts, hairstyles of all time. But she cut it in a way that, like, all I had to do is put a little bit of product in it, and, 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 and it just falls into place. And you want to know what I had done for the first time? And I highly, highly recommend it because she is good at it. I always had this fear of a hot towel where they put it on your face and then they bring that straight razor. I, I've always had a fear of that, but I had it done. And I'm so glad that I did. It, it's, it's, it's a weird experience to get shaved by such an instrument near very one of your most important <laughs> veins in your body. And to be able to trust somebody to do that. And, and she did not nick me one time. No cut, no ingrown hairs. Actually, she, she explained, to the, explained to me that most guys really don't know how to shave correctly. They pull the skin way too tight when they shave. And the hair gets underneath the skin. And it, 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 it just grows weird. So check out Amanda Bellinger. Oh, here, I also have something. It, she also plays the ukulele. And I, and I pulled this audio. I, I hope that she doesn't care that, that, that I'm sharing this. But I just wanted to show you what type of person she is. She's just very, very unique.
was kind of worried about playing that because that that is a cover of the Cranberry Zombie, which Dolores O'Halloran, I think that's her name. I think she had one of the most amazing voices. And that was one of my favorite songs growing up as a teenager. But I, I, w- I was kind of hesitant to play it. Not because it's not good. Uh, because this show is available on YouTube. Now, do you guys think that I will get, I will, I will get like a, a strike against me? Because, I mean, can you, do you have to worry about copyright and stuff when it comes to covers of songs? I'm I'm just very curious. I'd like to hear from you. Email me, Tuttle at gmail.com, or leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. But once again, if you're looking for a good experience, and if you've never been to a real, real barber, and you're in the Melbourne area, hell, I, you know what? If you If you just want a great experience, and you want to go on a road trip and get a good cut, go down and see Amanda. Got a barbershop. It's called the Lost Arts Barbershop. It's located at my eyes. I see these glasses I've noticed. I cannot read close up now. 905 East New Haven Avenue, Suite 204. God, man, I, I just learned this. Is that I can't, I cannot read. See, let me give you a little thing show on my phone, okay? Now, I pull up all the information that I need, and I'm, I'm just noticing now that, oh, my God, I just noticed this. All right, so I take my glasses off. I can read it perfectly now. I'm going to have to remember that. I, I am, does that make me nearsighted or farsighted? But now I know that I need to take these glasses off. Go to her barbershop. It's the Lost Arts Barbershop. It's located at 905 East New Haven Avenue, Suite 204, Melbourne, Florida, 32901. Now, I'm not absolutely sure if she does walk-ins, but give her a call. Uh, She's also on this thing. If you go to her website, she has a QR code that you can scan and you can set up a booking. But uh, give her a call, 321-804-1067. Follow her shop on social media. She's on Facebook and Instagram, The Lost Arts Barbershop, and also Instagram, The Lost Arts Barbershop. Uh, so, yeah, check out my good friend, Amanda Bellinger. I don't even know why I say good friend. I mean, we've talked on social media. I've met her a couple of times. And you will absolutely love the experience. Be back in a few minutes. You are listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, do us a favor. When you're done here, check out The Little Cheese Show. That's The Little Cheese Show. Available everywhere podcasts are found. And subscribe to their Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash littlecheese437. And now, back to the show. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. I know a lot of you guys are probably going to be like, oh, well, Tuttle's doing shorter shows now. That's not the case. I'm actually playing less filler stuff now, so technically, in all reality, you are going to be getting more content. But once again, you know, if you want me to sponsor anything, email me, tuttle at gmail.com, or you can leave me a voicemail, 407-270-3044. I will plug anything. I will plug your OnlyFan page. I will plug your business. Hell, if you want me to say something stupid, just email me, tuttle at gmail.com. Now, a lot of you guys uh, have known me. A lot, of, a lot of people ask, why did you do all the stupid stuff that you did in your radio career? And I think one of the things, my strongest point, my, my, my strongest thing in the radio business is the man on the street stuff. That's why I've always wanted to be a reporter. I wanted to get out there. I want to be able to ask the questions. You guys, it, like, one of the most proudest things that I am, am most proud of is the the coverage of the Casey Anthony trial for the Bubba the Love Sponge show. I I I I think reporters are a bunch of pussies now. They don't they don't ask follow up questions. I'm telling you right now, Channel Two, Wesh, WKMG Channel Six, WFTV Channel Nine, 
WOFL, Fox 35, hell, any of the TV news stations in Tampa. Look, I've been looking as of late. You know, back in the day, everybody would say, oh, you got a face for radio. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's a funny joke. <laughs> but I, I've been seeing some of the people that they're putting on TV now, and it's like, you know what? I'm not as bad looking as some of the people that I'm seeing on TV, and I'm better at what they could do. To be able to go out, nobody asks follow-up questions. I love doing this man-on-the-street stuff. I do not get embarrassed. I do not get awkward. The only time I get awkward is around women, which I, you know, like, I'm the most confident person in the world. I will ask. I don't care who it is. I don't care how famous they are. Like, right now, if you told me, hey, Tuttle, you got an hour, you're going to get to interview the President of the United States. You know what? Fuck it. Yes, let's do it. I'll do it. I, I, I'm not afraid to ask the question. And I'm kind of jealous because this next clip for you, I wish I would have thought of this. To be able to go out and do this, th these kids are brilliant. They are already ahead of the game. But with, with like anything that you find on the internet, who knows, this, this could all be set up. But these two dudes go out with a box of trophies. I guess they're at some Little League game. And I think they were trying to prove a point. How, like, all kids get trophies now just because they don't want their feelings hurt. You know, I, I, I kind of think that that is not good for kids. The world is not fair. It's going to put its foot on your throat and at some times just try to kill you. But these participation trophies and stuff like that, I just think that it gives the kids a false sense of security. What are you trying to do with those trophies? Kind of just an ego boost, like show these kids who's boss. Don't Not as much. People just walk in and stroll around with a box full of trophies. Well, you know, we got to show it off. What are we going to do? Not show it off? As Shrek once said, you're an all-star, and I just, I'm feeling like an all-star, so. Are you here to watch a baseball game? Well, we're here to, you know, give them motivation, kind of be a role model to the youth. You know, after I was thinking about giving a speech maybe to them and telling them, like, yeah, you know, if they get as good happen. as me, they can, they can maybe get a trophy one day. That's not going to happen. I work for the park here, and I didn't invite you to come. Uh, all right, two things here. That Did you hear the crack of that aluminum bat? I want to know the distance and the exit velocity on that swing because that sounded like the kid got a hold of it. Like he hit it right on the nails and went about 300 feet over dead center. Number two, I hate when these cops... And listen, I had a great experience last night. You know, I was hanging out with Teresa, my, my, my nurse friend, my friend that is a nurse, and did some nighttime photography. And Volusia County Sheriff's officers, two of them, they stopped just to see how we were doing the check on us. They did not harass us at all. They were actually very, very nice. And I got to tell you, uh, Sheriff Mike Chitwood has his guys on point they really really do now like i said they're bad cops i haven't met one in volusia county yet i'm sure there might be but for the most part i have not had a single issue with the volusia county sheriff's office they have been absolutely amazing but this is also a public park that is paid by taxpayers money i they don't need permission to be there if they want to go out to that public park, if their parents, I don't know how old these kids are. They might be over 18, but taxpayer money going to a public park. If they want to go out there and do this bit, First Amendment, buddy, you say you're a cop, know the laws, shut the fuck up and be cool about it because this it just makes this guy look like angry old dad. I don't see you with the trophy. You're going to you're going to leave now. We have the trophies, we're the winners. Goodbye. Man, is this because of the trophies? Get out of our park. See, this is where usually people back down. They 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 think, "Oh, this guy's a police officer. He knows exactly what he's talking about." Oh my god, we need to get out of here. No. Tell this dude to pound sand. You're not doing anything wrong. You're in a public park. You're in a public area. I'm allowed to film you as much as I want to. 
As long as you know it, like if I'm, if I'm not hiddenly recording you, I have a camera out there. You you know that I'm being recorded and you're out in public that at a park that is paid by taxpayers money. Fuck you. I'm not going anywhere. These guys were doing nothing wrong. They are exercising their First Amendment. And I'm proud of these kids. I'm glad that they stood their ground. They didn't get rude. They didn't get angry. You want to know who the one that lost their shit? The guy that is supposedly a police officer. We're a winner. See our prize. You're a loser who sits and cries. Everyone! Get out of the park. I, I'll admit to it. I'm jealous. This is brilliant. This, this is a, it, It's so simple. Yes, it, it's a little corny. But I also think the corniness is just pissing this mad dad off even more. It is. It, it, it's so easy to get under people's skin and not do anything wrong at all. These, the, these are just people trying to have fun, trying to have a good time. I got to tell you, I got a lot of joy out of watching this video, and that's, this is exactly why I wanted to share it to or for with you. Yep. Go on. Yep. Here, See, go on. They love me. The crowd loves me. Are you gentlemen going to leave the park, or do I have to call the police? The police? Yes. You're trespassing on private property. Dude, all right, all right. Between us, between us. Okay, once again, did you hear that hit? That peeing off the aluminum bat? Whoever's team is up to bat right now is stacked. Like, you're going to see them in Williamsport, Pennsylvania if they have a Little League World Series this year because this team is ripping this pitcher's tits all day. And this guy, it is not private property, asshole. That, you know, at that point, see, this, this is what makes me angry. It, it, it drives me up the wall that people... Try to intimidate people that they think don't know the law. They, these kids did absolutely nothing wrong at all. And if this guy is a cop, he should lose his job. You can have one. <laughs> you can have one. You need to get out of the park. Hey, how are you? This is Sergeant Kenyon with the police department. Could you send a noble's law officer over because we have a couple of trespassers? If he's in the trespassers? Way. Winners. Winners. Not trespassers. <laughs> Winners. Win that, that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I got to find out who these kids are. I got to get my, I, I got to get Vulture, my producer, and we got to find out who these two are because I, I just want to say, man, thank you for doing this video. Thank you for knowing that you're right and having the balls to do this. Cause I got to tell you, when I, it, look, like I said, I am the best person when it comes to the man on the street stuff, which I'm going to be doing. I'm going to Deland later tonight. I'm going to, be, going to be helping out this kid, Aiden, that I met, who was a friend of a friend, my friend Addy. I met Aiden through Addy, and he's interested in getting into radio. I'm trying to get him an internship somewhere over here. And he's going to help me do some man on the streets up because they're having like this 420 celebration in the land. But I just got to give these kids credit. All right, guys. I want to thank everybody for listening to today's show. Don't forget tonight, probably in between eight and nine, going to be doing the Tuttle Daily Podcast live stream. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Tuttle. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell button because when you hit that bell button, you're going to get alerted to any time I go live or put up any new content. Hope you guys had a great day. Hope you stay safe, and I will talk to you tomorrow. And that's the show for today. Thanks for listening to the Tuttle Daily Podcast. Hey, don't be a dickhead. Do us a favor. Like, share, and subscribe to the show. Also, check out the Tuttle category at 315live.com. The Tuttle Daily Podcast is brought to you by Starfire Transport, stitchyouup.com, and pocketpairclub.com. Special thanks to show producer Vulture and co-host Sirach. Show voiceover services brought to you by jcvoiceover.com and The Little Cheese Show. Download and subscribe to The Little Cheese Show everywhere podcasts are found. If you want to help support the show, go to paypal.me slash Tuttle on the radio. You have something you want to say? 
tuttle at gmail.com or leave a voicemail at 407-270-3044. To follow all Tuttle's social media, go to tuttle.net. That's tuttle with two d's dot net. Thanks again for all your support, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Tuttle Daily Podcast.